Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. We have a fun project today. It's somewhat whimsical. It doesn't take too long, but it may challenge you a little bit, but it gives you a fun opportunity to play with. This is not an original design. I got this design from Frank Penta a number of years ago, and I've got a link to a handout from, from him in the show notes that might, might help you get through the project. Okay, here's basically the three pieces of wood you'd need, something about this size. For the pedestal, two and a half inches square by five or six inches long. For the roof, something about two and a half inches in diameter and about two and a half inches long. For the actual birdhouse itself, about one and a half inches in diameter and one and a half to two inches uh, long. In my backyard, We're going to cut these at one and a half and two inches, about an inch and a half, uh, inch and five eighths uh, in diameter. I've got it clamped down on this side so it won't spin on me. Now, substitutions, obviously if you can't go out and find your little branch, you can use most any scrap, uh, spindle, spindle scrap will, will work just fine. Uh, you'll also need some way of turning a perch. Uh, one technique is taking uh, between centers and drilling a hole in a, in a glue block and, and mounting it. Um, the more luxurious way, my way is if you have a collet chuck, that's a great way and you can use uh, any type of uh, spindle scrap. Uh, exotic woods like this ebony would work out just great. Simple things like drilling a hole on a drill press, uh, it may have a learning curve. Clamp things down. I'm using a half inch drill bit first before I use the heavier uh, one inch uh, drill bits. Make sure you got a backer board. Mark center. Now let's move up to the larger drill bit. Okay, that's the first success I've had. I seem to be having better luck doing this on the lathe at a fairly slow speed. Maybe that's part of it. Speed, the stability is certainly part of it. There's just no vibration in it, in doing it this way. Because the other way everything seemed to be vibrating. I'll give it a shot at trying to break it loose, but it might be easier to part it off. I've been told that the shock makes it come loose easily. Let's find a especially good place. <laughs> yeah, came out loose out of here. Just goes to show you how tight the medium CA glue uh, with a little bit of accelerator on one end, glue on the other. There it goes. This actually seems to be a little bit easier. Drilling it a half inch with a Forstner bit uh, first and then following up with a one inch uh, twist, twist bit. Okay, we're going to start with uh, turning the roof. Uh, two and a half inches by two and a half inches, we turn it round. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a tenon on it. You're going to, you're going to fit this not in your normal jaws, but you're going to fit this into some smaller jaws that will hold a one inch uh, tenon. Uh, I'm using this set of 35 millimeter jaws by record power. Now here's the, the trick with a smaller set of jaws and is that you want to make the tenon a little bit longer than usual because we're going to maneuver this thing in here. But the, the important thing is it can't bottom out. So in this case the longest the tenon could be is somewhere close to uh, about, about a half an inch. And this will become more obvious as we as we go on. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and turn that that tenon down to fit. Um, basically, it's going to fit in the the body of the birdhouse. Uh, it's going to be drilled out uh, one inch. So let's go ahead and take that take that down. Here's an example of what we're going to be 
uh, be looking at. And set that right at uh, one inch so I can double check it. So I'm going to use my uh, shop made beading and parting tool. This is 8 millimeter. Uh, I didn't get it, didn't have marks on it because I cut this all the bandsaw, so it's a little bit off. That's okay, we'll fix that. good okay now let's go ahead and take this off and put it in the chuck and start turning instead of using 35 millimeter jaws we're going to use these spigot jaws in which case uh, I could have used a little bit of, uh, longer tenon because I've got a little more room but I think this is going to work out actually it's just about right now first thing we're going to do is be aware, we got four sets of jaws. We're going to be canting this thing in four different directions. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start uh, adjusting this. I'm going to, the, the direction we can move is actually in between the jaws. So we can move it in that direction. Kind of hard to move it against, against the jaw. So having this with a little bit of room here helps. So we're going to start off with number number one and we're going to go forward of that right here and I'm going to turn this block of wood just I'm going to loosen this and and adjust this up just a little bit now let's bring this in see if see if that's within a quarter of an inch I mean three-eighths of an inch we don't want to get too much further than that all right so in this case I've actually um, I just I changed this. So we're starting with uh, jaw set number two with the opening next to that. That's the direction it's canted toward. I'm going to put just a little bit of tailstock uh, support there, just a pin in it, just to kind of give us a little more security. I'm going to move this, I'm going to use a smaller tool rest, to make it easier just to get in and out of there. Got a little four inch robust I really really like. Alright now it's always important you always turn this to make sure that it's not gonna bump because this thing's gonna be going wiggity wiggity on us. That's uh, that's the technical term. Alright so where that point is is gonna be the point of our finial so I'm gonna start taking taking this down and I'm gonna use a, a a smaller bowl gouge. I could use a, a, a spindle gouge. I'd probably want to use a, a half an inch. And let's see, we, we're going to be cutting a lot of air, so the faster we go, the cleaner the cut. Now, I'm wearing uh, safety glasses, but I really want to be wearing a face shield, so let me, let me put on my, my face shield because when you're doing multi axis, off axis, you got a little more risk of dislodging a small piece going to a very high speed. I've got to get 
rid of that damage there on the very end. I think I've got it. Now, a very important consideration is you always have to sand before you go to the next turning because it's going to be in a, a different axis when you come back to it. So, I'm going to use a little 260 grit and just, just touch that up a little bit. I need to put a little sanding lubricant on here. And I think 260 uh, grit is going to be fine for this. All right, next, next, I'm going to, I think, turn one more little feature here before I change the axis. change the axis again and I'm going to keep going in the direction I'm going so in this case we're looking at the one in front of the two so now we're going to rotate it around and we're going to lean camp this if you will toward get it flat and then lift it up in between number three and four and then tighten it up we're going to come around to the other side and tighten it okay Next, we're going to do a feature here, and I'm not sure what it's going to look like. Uh, my suggestion, don't plan on getting this perfect the first time. Have enough to get down here with a couple of blocks of wood and just practice this off-axis or multi-axis turning until you start feeling comfortable with it before you start worrying about putting together this, this project. Light cut, light cut. Turning the air, I'm going to turn the speed up a little bit. We're going from small to large, so I've got to think a little bit about proportion. Uh, the first one I did, not too bad, it's going from small to large, except it should have been maybe a little bit smaller here. So I want to turn this one down to a little smaller smaller radius or diameter, if you will. That's the way I'm going to be working with. Now I see the shadow. I see the shadow of this right here, so I've got to be very careful not to get too carried away. I can only come down here just a little bit more before I start getting into this bottom feature. So as I step back and watch this shadow, I'm just going to come in here. Let's see what that looks like and make adjustments. Okay. Let's hope I haven't turned off this... Uh... Yeah, this is getting a little small there, so I don't want to change the shape of that. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to live with that and uh, maybe come down a little bit deeper. beeswax and uh, mineral oil concoction. If you're not familiar with uh, sanding lubricant, check out the, the link I've, I'm showing here. And I can get, I can turn, I can sand that area in here without too much trouble being careful. Alright, so can I get one more? Before I go to uh, 
centering it, I think I probably can. So let's go to the next one around, which is between 1 and 2, which is the one we didn't get the first time.